On my last video, I talked to you about the PreSonus Fader Port 16, which is a Surface controller to control your DAW. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Fader Port 16 with Cubase. What's going on my friends? Chris here from Mixdown Online. Yes, the Fader Port 16 is perfect if you're using Studio One, but also works with different DAWs by using the Mackie Control and UE protocols. But what I'm gonna focus on in this video is to set the Fader Port 16 with Cubase. All right, so first I'm gonna power up the Fader Port 16 by keeping my fingers on the first select, the first two select buttons and that will enter the uh, preferences mode out of the Fader Port 16. From that point on, I'll be able to customize a few, a few uh, parameters of the uh, Fader Port 16 and also to set up the boot mode to Cubase. Um, so first, let's go and click on setup. Okay, I'm just gonna have you a look at a few things here that you can do with the Fader Port 16. So if you wanna uh, tune your faders, you can select tune faders and then uh, that will adjust the speed of the faders if you uh, uh, you desire to have a different speed than the one that is the, there by default. I'm gonna click on back, I'm good with this uh, setup. And you can also tune the touch sensitivity if you select touch sensitivity. And uh, there you go, I'm gonna keep it as is. And uh, there's factory default. And uh, look at that, this, this is the test mode, which is quite cool if you wanna test out the lights of the Fader Port uh, 16, which is quite cool. And also, look at that, there's a pretty cool thing here that you can do, again, in test, and uh, it's Mardi Gras, look at that. Now, that is pretty cool, all right. Okay, let's get back to the serious stuff and set that up for Cubase. So I'm gonna click on Control MCU and I'm gonna select, I'm gonna make sure that Cubase is selected because right now with this mode, you can select Logic, Cubase, Sonar and Ableton. So I'm gonna make sure Cubase is selected and I'm gonna click on Exit and that will restart the Fader Port 16. And now I'm ready to open and boot up Cubase and set that up within Cubase. Okay, so now in Cubase, what we first need to do is to click on Studio on top and click on Studio Setup. And that will bring up the Studio Setup window. Now I'm gonna click on MIDI Port Setup and on that window, I'm gonna see the PreSonus FP16, which is the Fader Port 16. I'm gonna see the MIDI in uh, two and MIDI in one, which is listed as is in my case. That might be different on your end, but basically you have MIDI one, which in my case is PreSonus FP16 and MIDI in two and out also, uh, which is PreSonus FP16 and MIDI in two, basically. First, what I'm gonna do is to make sure that the in all MIDI are unchecked for both of the PreSonus uh, MIDI ins. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure they are inactive. And then I'm gonna click on the plus sign to add a device. And I'm gonna add Mackie Control. Now I'm gonna need to create two Mackie Controls since the Fader Port 16 is a eight Fader protocol. So this is gonna be the first Mackie control that I'm gonna create because I'm gonna create a second one since Mackie control is an eight channel protocol. So I'm gonna need to create two because I have a 16 channel controller. So for the first Mackie control, I'm gonna make sure that my MIDI input and output are set up to MIDI in and out two. Okay, in my case, it's very simple. It's called MIDI in 2 PreSonus FP16 and MIDI out 2 PreSonus FP16. So I'm just gonna make sure that the second MIDI in and out of the PreSonus are the one selected. Then I'm gonna create a second Mackie control. And this time for Mackie control 2, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna make sure that my input and MIDI output are set up to PreSonus FP16 in my case, or if it's uh, listed as MIDI in one and MIDI in and MIDI out one, those are the ones that you need to select for Mackie Control 2. Okay, so we're doing the opposite, and this is, again, very important to follow. 
Then I'm going to click on OK. Next, I have one last step to do is uh, to go to Studio, down to More Options, and I'm going to select Mackie Control. And I'm going to make sure that Cubase is the option that is selected. I'm going to do the same for the Mackie Control 2. And I'm also going to make sure that Cubase is the one selected. And there you go. I'm all set up. Everything is supposed to work well. So let's have a quick try. I'm just going to click on play to start with. And there you go. That works pretty well. So let's look at what we have here uh, directly on the Fade Report 16. I'm going to show you how all of those uh, controls work uh, with Cubase, how the integration is done uh, by using Cubase. Uh, what is written on all of those buttons are mainly for Studio One. So there's going to be a few differences regarding Cubase, and this is what we're going to look at uh, at this moment. So let's first start by the transport section here. So we have stop, which is pretty straightforward. Play. Then we can forward and rewind. We can record if we have some channels in record ready. And we can also activate the loop uh, cycle function in Cubase by clicking on this button right here. So pretty straightforward. Now, if you look at the 16 channels, all of them has a small display on top. You can see all the tracks listed on that display also. So right now I have my room uh, selected and you can see, I don't know, I hope you can see it from the, the, the top camera. Um, you see room directly on the display. Uh, so it's very easy to locate which channel and track you are working on directly from the Fade Report 16. You can also add a meter display also if I just click on Shift and click on that, uh, that button out of the Session Navigator, and that will add metering directly on the display. Okay, again, very useful. So again, if you want to deactivate or activate this option, you just need to click on the right shift and uh, click on the uh, that big round button here on the navigation section of the fit report and that will deactivate or activate that meter uh, that metering option which is quite nice uh, then we have select the select button is pretty straightforward is uh, what you need to select um, the channel you want to work on directly in your DAW in our case Cubase so if I click on um, the Tom one channel right here and I click on select it is going to be selected also directly in Cubase and if I do the same in Cubase and I select any channels it is also going to be selected directly on the fade report you're going to see that track selected as far as you're into um, the zone that is selected on the fit report. If you want to see which zone you are working on from Cubase, you'll see at the bottom of those channels, you see like a white line. That is the actual, that are actually all the channels that are getting controlled by the fit report at this moment. So if I switch page uh, directly on the fade report, that will also switch that selection. And so we'll get to it later on. Uh, but basically this is what we have. So by selecting a channel, it's gonna be selected directly on the fade report. Then we have mute and solo, which is again, pretty straightforward. Let me just enlarge this a bit. There you go. All right, so mute, solo. Okay, again, very easy to access. And also, if we look at the display, we have the panning. Okay, so we can access the panning. So let's click and select my room channel. And on the top uh, left of the fade report, we have the pan knob right here. So I can just um, turn that to the left or the right, and that will move the panning from left to right. Okay, so now next, if we look at that navigation section here on the right side of the fade report, we have uh, those eight buttons here. Uh, 
that goes from channel, zoom, scroll, bank, and so on. Now, those are uh, commands for uh, Studio One. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you how um, how the fit report works, uh, with what the par parameters they're going to control in Cubase, okay, how the integration is made by using all of those buttons. First, if we look at channel and we click on channel, um, that is very simple. You're going to be able to uh, move all the faders by one space. Okay, so if I click on previous, all everything is going to move to the uh, by just one space to the right side. My channel, my selected channel is going to move to the right, and the same if I click on next. Okay, it's just going to go to the next, uh, the next bank of faders by one space only. Okay, if I click on bank, I'm going to go right to the right side here, click on bank, and it's going to do the same thing, but by a group of eight faders at a time. Okay, so it's going to be faster to, um, to just go from one end to the other end of the mix console. Okay, and you can also use that big knob uh, instead of the next and previous buttons if you just want to do this faster. Okay, and you want to go from one end uh, from the top of the mixer to the end of the mixer in a very fast way, just use the big knob and that is going to do the trick. And again, for channel, same thing, you can use that big knob also if you want to move everything faster. Okay, then we have Zoom. Uh, zoom, if we just go to the project window, this is going to zoom in and out the project window. Very, very simple. If we click on scroll, uh, that will scroll by 1 16th of a note uh, directly in the project window. Then bank, we saw uh, what bank is for. If we click on master. Now to my understanding, master does about the same thing as channel for now. And then we have click, which is not assigned yet. Um, section will actually scrub. Okay, if you turn your uh, the big knob here, uh, or use the next and previous button, it will just scrub over. Okay, and then marker will go to the next marker, which is very useful. Okay, so if I just just gonna zoom out here. All right, and then use the marker to go from one marker to the other, okay? So it's a very fast way to jump from one marker to the other by using this uh, option here. So those are the basic function of those eight buttons. Then we have a second row, F1 to F8. Um, for Cubase, what that is going to do, it will customize the config, different configuration windows that we can find right here. So now I don't have any um, setup right now, so let's set up a few, okay? I'm just, gonna, for example, going to click on Add Configuration on top and uh, name this one Config. And what I'm going to do here is uh, let's just... Just use group channels, okay? So this is something I can do. I'm going to name this one, uh, I'm going to add configuration and name this one group GR, click on OK, and I'm going to do uh, create a new one with only FX channels this time. Click on add configuration, FX, and what I can do here is to jump one, uh, from one config, one configuration to the other by uh, keeping my finger on shift and select F1 to, through F8. Now I only have three configurations set up, so I'm only going to use F1 through F3. So I'm going to click on Shift, select F2, and there you go. Now I am on directly on the second configuration of my mix console. So um, let's do the same for the third one, and there you go. Now I only have FX channel uh, directly on the mix console. So that can um, be very useful if you want to jump from one mix console configuration to the other um, if this is something you work with. So you can access that by clicking on shift and those eight buttons here from F1 to F8. Um, then we have on top, okay, all those latch trim off and so on. Latch is basically save. So if you click on latch, uh, that will 
save your project. Then we have trim and off, which if you look at the back labels here, we have save, redo and undo. And this is actually accurate for Cubase also. Okay, so forget about latch, trim and off and just look at save, redo and undo. So to undo uh, something you did, uh, for example, let's just uh, get rid of those. Uh, if I wanna undo what I just did, I'm gonna click on undo and there you go. If I wanna redo what I did, I'm just gonna click on redo and there you go. Okay, then we have at the bottom write and read. So if I click on read, that will read the automation of that channel. And if I click on write, that will activate the write of that channel. So this way I'll be able to, I'll be ready to do some automation right away. Okay, so, um, and then we have touch. Now touch is revert to previous saved version. I never use that function, but it's there if you need to pretty useless for my needs. Okay, next let's jump to the left side of the fade report and we have solo clear, which is gonna clear all solo. So if I have a bunch of tracks in solo and I wanna clear them all at, at once at the same time, I'm just gonna click on solo clear and that will clear them out. Uh, same for mute clear also, same thing. I'm just gonna click on mute clear and there you go. Um, this is also gonna work. Then we have arm. This is good if I want to arm some channels to be, uh, to be ready to, uh, for recording. So I'm gonna click on arm, select the channels I wanna arm. Let's look at, uh, yeah, there you go. So if I look at my kick, my bass drum and sub kick channels, they are, and the snare, they all are ready to be recorded. So the only thing I need to do is click on arm, select the channels of my page that I want um, that I want to arm, and that's it. You know, if I want to, I can click on shift on the right side of the uh, the fade report, click on arm again, and that will uh, that will select that will arm all the tracks within that um, that range. So this is basically how you can control the Fader Port 16 with Cubase. So you, you get a glimpse of the integration that PreSonus made for Cubase. On the next video, we're going to go a bit deeper and I'm going to show you how you can control the sends of a channel and also plugins. And this is actually quite cool. So. Stay tuned for the next video. So there you go, my friends. This is gonna be it for today. If you have any comments or questions, leave everything down below and I'm gonna leave the link of the PreSonus website if you wanna take a look at the Fade Report 16. All the links are gonna be down below. All right, take care and I'm gonna see you on the next video so we can go and edit some plugins with the Fade Report 16. See you then.